This time, the first course is cooked at City Grocery in Oxford, Mississippi, by chef owner John Currents. It's a smoked oyster timble with fried Tabasco cheese grits. Then, from the Minneapolis area, Ernst Conrad dresses up that Midwestern staple, pork, in a Cardon Bleu presentation. Note the use of plastic wrap to shape the roll. Dessert is created by Jean-Luc Albin from his pastry shop at Metairie in the New Orleans area. It's a custard-filled tart jeweled with fresh glazed fruit. John Currents was born and raised in New Orleans and began his career in some of the city's hot restaurants, including a sort of postgraduate degree in business and marketing from the Commander's Palace branch of the Brennan family. From his own place in Oxford, here is a timble of smoked oysters. All right, the first step in preparing this dish is we're going to take our uh, method that we feel like we've perfected to some extent of smoking on top of the stove without getting into an, an external smoker situation where we just take a, a uh, hotel pan, put a uh, nice mound of hickory chips in the bottom of it, and take a blowtorch to get the, uh, the chips started smoking. The oysters, since they're stored in their own liquor, don't require much of a brining process in order to to uh, keep them from drying out. We just smoke them very lightly. Um, I'm going to season them with uh, a little bit of pepper and some shallot here real quickly. That should be just about started. I've got the uh, about two pounds of oysters here. And I'm going to sprinkle just with a little bit of cracked black pepper, a little bit of shallot for some extra flavor. Again, nothing too terribly scientific about this. This is in a perforated pan so that uh, the oysters will lose a little bit of their water as they start smoking, which will go ahead and, and slow the, smoke, the, uh, the smoking process down just a little bit. So hit these on real quickly. Cover them with a uh, sheet of aluminum foil. got a sort of a medium flame underneath them that'll provide the heat to keep the fire going briefly just long enough to smoke those oysters and we're going to smoke them about I'm going to say 12 to 15 minutes so while that's going on we'll have the uh, rest of our ingredients to prepare this is as I said going on uh, the uh, the fried uh, Tabasco cheese grit cakes we uh, we go through a lot of cheese grits on our signature dish here so what we'll do is salvage them at the end of the night, lay them out on a sheet pan and cut them the following day. And uh, we'll just drop these down in a uh, stovetop fryer at about, about 325 degrees. With that all working for us, what we do for, uh, for this particular timbali is we take just regular inch and a half PVC that you can get at the uh, hardware store cut into about uh, four or five inch segments and uh, we'll start filling it at this point. Okay, after about 12 or 15 minutes, when you unwrap the oysters from the smoker, what you should have is, they won't all be perfect by virtue of the fact of the varying sizes, but your medium to large size oysters should still be nice and plump. They've gotten a little brown from the smoke in here, but they're not dried up. The inside should be very visible, nice looking, but it should be a nice plump oyster that you're going to work with. So what we'll do is first we have uh, a few smoked oysters here that should be enough, just about enough for, for what we've got. We're going to take a little bit of prepared chopped uh, Texas smoked bacon that we use to make the bottom layer. The bacon works well because it creates sort of a, a nice solid foundation for the rest of the timbali because you're getting into a sort of a vertical presentation here. It has the, uh, the tendency to fall over if it's, uh, if it's not done just right. So we use the bacon as the base. We'll come in with some chiffonade spinach. And then a few, few oysters. As you can see, this, these oysters still are, are nice and puffy. They haven't lost all of their uh, 
all of their water. So we'll stuff those down in there. Kind of nice. And uh, we just use our house citrus vinaigrette. You can use whatever you really like. Uh, it doesn't really matter. This, this creates a just sort of a binder for the whole thing. We'll come over the top and just spoon a little of that in there. Then we'll come back with another layer of bacon. Some more shipping on spinach. And then a few more oysters will go on top. The best thing to do with this is uh, after it's is uh, assembled like this to uh, go ahead and put it in the refrigerator for uh, 30 or 45 minutes so all the ingredients come to the same temperature. It gives the vinaigrette uh, a little bit of time to, to bind it and it gives it a little more of a, of a sturdy construction. So. Take the back of the spoon to Mash this down a little bit with. Okay, grit cakes come out. They're uh, nice and browned at this point. Should be a little crispy on the outside. Take the grit cakes. Again, you need to. Uh, to consider finding the uh, the flattest surface to set this up on, again, so that it will maintain its uh, structural integrity. And remove, as uh, I forgot to say, that uh, the bottom of here, I'll wrap this in plastic just to hold it so that when you pick it up, you don't have to, to worry about uh, it sliding out of the bottom. over the top of that with a little more of our vinaigrette. Some rock save tomato. Austrian-born Ernst Conrad began his career at his mother's restaurant, then entered the absolute monarchy of the European apprentice system. Rising through the stations of various hotels, from Berlin to Tel Aviv, he opened Conrad's Bistro in Minnesota. His entree is sesame pork tenderloin. Okay, for the preparation of this dish, we should have a nice, equal piece of uh, center-cut pork tenderloin, preferably to use a young... Uh, um, the loin of a younger pork, which is nice and pink. If, uh, the, if the pig is older or, or bigger grown, the darker the meat gets and the tougher it will be. So the nice light colored pink tenderloin, which we butterfly cut, we call that the butterfly cut, to open it up, just like this, pound it out a little. Then we put a slice of ham, fresh spinach leaves, right on top of each other, just like that. There's no big fuss. Cheddar cheese in the center. And the idea about this dish was actually called to have a combination of east and west ingredients. So roll it over, and then we wrap it in plastic Okay. You roll it tight in the saran wrap plastic, roll it up to get a nice round and uniform shape. 
At this point, the pork roll can be put into the freezer to stiffen up. Gently open up. See that it keeps the, 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 the shape. And then we bread it. Just very basic in flour. Egg wash. And then in, a, in that mix of breadcrumbs and sesame seeds. The roll is then deep fried until golden brown. So after the breading process, we would deep fry it for about one minute to get this golden brown color and then bake it in the oven for about 12 minutes by 375 degrees. The sauce is started by softening chopped shallots in olive oil. A little garlic and tomato strips. I will be serving and garnishing this dish with uh, tri-college spatulas today. Spatzel is the German dumpling, and these have been cooked and are warmed through in butter. You do the sauce, I add a little, a little beef jus. Remove it from the, from the heat and add fresh butter. Season a little salt and pepper. And in the very end, I add the, the chopped up sorrel leaves. We keep this sauce on the side. Since we added the butter, you cannot bring it back to the, to the heat because the, then the butter would separate and the sauce would break. Now in the meantime, I have here going I have here about four carrots and four parsnips cooked in water with a little salt. What we try to do is we, we cook it very soft and then mush it up. Check the pork if it's done. Which I think they are. And we're going to get ready to plate this dish. We put that, I put that puree in the middle of the plate. Cut the tenderloins on a bias. The three. Can you arrange the sauce? Put the tenderloin on top of the sauce. Colored spatulas in between. Okay. And 
and I like to garnish it with those parsnip sticks, which is which is very simple to do. It just peel the parsnips, cut little sticks out of it, and deep fry them shortly until they're brown and, and ready to stand up. So little greens in between. To make this plate nice and pretty. Jean-Luc Albin was born in a town near the French Alps. His father was a chef, so Jean-Luc took naturally to cooking. His training was in France, then in hotels in Bermuda and New Orleans. He worked in Dallas and Los Angeles before opening his pastry shop in Metairie. Here is his fruit tart. A sugar dough for the tart shell is started with three eggs, five and a half ounces of powdered sugar, and seven ounces of butter. An interesting flavor factor is orange blossom water. Now the butter is added. This recipe is great for sugar cookie. You make the same recipe, you make great cookies. This is 18 ounces of cookie flour. Let's make it simple, like that. The dough is chilled before it is rolled out. In order to pre-bake that shell nice and evenly, what I do is I take a piece of parchment paper that I cut, and I put some beans. As you can see, red beans, black beans, white beans, navy beans, all kind of beans. And I bring them all the way to the side. And I'm gonna stick it just like that, just in the oven. And I would say for about 20 to 25 minutes, Nice hot oven, I would say about 375. And as you can see, you have a nice flat bottom and a nice straight edge. You remove delicately the ring. The tart is filled with a basic vanilla custard.
creamy fresh fruit of the season are wonderful. You get some fresh peaches, nectarine, it's very good with mango. Huh? I plan to have some fresh cherries here, and the cherries. How about some blueberries? Add a little apricot glaze, nice glaze. This is an apricot glaze, but any clear fruit jelly that's melted will do. 